Hey, remember to subscribe and follow my podcast so when I release a new episode, you get a notification. And follow me on Instagram. Yes, King Oliver. I am very active on there. Have a great day and enjoy the episode. So what really fascinates me still, even though I know all this and it happens all the time, is when you think about somebody or speak about somebody, they then come into your life a few days, hours later, like you just literally come across them. Like I haven't seen somebody since I was 21 and I was speaking about them yesterday, like nine hours ago from now. And then I go to the shop this morning and they're in a car and I'm like, holy shit. Like I've not seen this person for seven years. I speak about them and they're there. And it always, it never, it always amazes me how the universe works, how every thought, every everything we speak is a magnet. And people have no idea that what we think is literally attracting everything into our life, whether it's good or bad. And the, the power people would have if they knew this, they wouldn't speak about anyone they hate again. Like people bitch about people. They wouldn't even bother because then they're just going to come back into their lives. Mm. yeah it's so interesting how it works and so many people don't know that we are all like energy and our thoughts are energy and as soon as we think about something really strongly and uh, when we even talk about it it makes it even stronger then we attract exactly that into our lives Um, that's called activating the reticular activating system so um, let's say you would like to buy a new car and then you see it suddenly all over the place like on the street and people are talking about that particular car, that's because you're so focused on that. And our thoughts just have such strong energy and it's crazy. So um, it's so important. I always tell my clients that they um, are aware of what they think and what they speak out into the universe because you, you attract that, right? When I was 21, when I had my major spiritual awakening, I wanted to get um, a car and I was test driving cars and I was seeing the same syllables of a number plate. So my initials are OGC, um, my birthday 28. And I was seeing like OGC 28 on number plates all over the place. Wow. And I remember I test drove a, a mini and I said to the person next to me, I've just, I said, holy shit, like I'm looking at a number plate. I've been seeing that everywhere. And at the same time, I was thinking of one person and every single time I went to the shop, the casino, the petrol station, it was the name tag was of that person. And this one I suddenly became aware of like law of attraction. But it was, oh, my God, my thoughts are literally making this come into my life. The more I focus on it, the more I see it. As you said, when you think about getting a new car, they're everywhere. And I'm like, well, if I wasn't thinking of getting a new car, is it there or is it now that I'm just more aware? And you nev- you're never going to know because when you observe it, it changes. So it's like you don't actually know whether something's still going to be there if you're not focusing on it because when you look at it, it changes anyway. So it's a very complex system in it. Yeah, that's true. I think it's still there, but um, the funny thing is that when we're once we're aware of what we want or what we think about, then the signs are there for us to take action on that, right? Because there's law of attraction, which means You have to think about something and then eventually it enters your life, but then you have to take action. That's how manifestation works, right? You have to go forward and get what you want. So the universe provides us with all these symbols or signs and then we are like, we just have to go and get it. And so many people, they want a black or white answer. It's like in life, it's marriage, kids, house, dog, it's it's that, that, or you don't have any of that. And it's like nothing is just black and white. There is everything is gray. And then there's like thousands of different like spectrums of gray. And yet people live on a black and white thing. And it doesn't exist. It's simply man made like fairy tale when like Prince Charming and books growing up and films and we're younger. It's nonsense. It's somebody's imagination who wrote a book and a film at some point. And it's nonsense. And then people look for this type of lifestyle and it doesn't exist. Now you can create a lifestyle like that as much as you can but when you have something you always want more and then when you get more you lose what you had so it's like if I stand here I want more and if I go there to get what I think I want I'm losing that and there is no there's no perfect balance it's a continuous getting what you want now until someone else comes into your life and then you get that like everything just changes nothing stays the same forever and even now reinforcements of every time I think I want something it's not what I want and then I change and then that's not what I want and it's just the awareness of there is nothing that is permanent forever 
everything is constantly changing. My thoughts are always changing. And um, when you really grasp that, nothing stays the same. It's okay to be impulsive and decisive, not f- go through with something or, you know, start dating and then not or start a business and then not. It's like you've got to start a business and make it go forever because you're told that consistency is the secret to making things successful, which it is. Mm-hmm. But like you're not supposed to have one job forever, like go to university and get one job forever. Everyone's changing. And mm-hmm. as we evolve, our partners evolve. And if they don't evolve, then we can become out of sync. So, yeah, it really is. It's uh, it's interesting. Yeah. And I think people also have to understand that we are constantly creating. And we can, like you said, always change our mind and create something new. Because we are the creators of our lives, right? And every day, this can be something different that we want to create. And life is not a process of... Um, finding out who you are or discovering who you are, what your passion is or what your purpose is here on earth, you can create that. And every day you can decide new what you want to create or what you want to have in your life. I was in a deer park yesterday, like mass, like loads and loads of deers all over the place. And somebody I was with, I said to them, I'm going to go up to it and feed him. And they're like, you can't feed him. It won't come up to you. And I was like, okay, watch. Right. So we're just walking around the deer park and this massive deer with antlers. We had some nuts and I just went up to him slowly, put my hand out and he came up to me and I fed him. And then she stroked his head or whatever. I'm just feeding this like wild deer some nuts. And then he just buggered off. And that, to me, that's like amazing. Like, it's like a rare thing that never happens. Like cows are easily, you can feed them easier, horses. But a deer is something really amazing about the power of like that massive deer. And I didn't even think the fact that he could just like bite my fingers off. I just literally had a nut in my finger, just trusted my feelings and just fed him. It was such a nibble, like a horse nibbling grass. And it was just like so soft. And I thought, shit, this massive thing could charge at me. And it just felt so in harmony. And that's also something else. People don't spend enough time around nature. Oh, yeah, that, that's so true. And I think when you are in your energy and you're on the different uh, on that special vibration, animals can feel that. Like you can recharge your energy in the woods, for example, and especially when you spend a lot of time with animals. And um, one day, because I enjoy diving, one day I went scuba diving and I thought to myself, today I really want to see these big manta rays that was in Indonesia. And I just set my mind up to that and I said, I'm going to see them today. And then suddenly underwater, I saw like 20 of these big manta rays. They were just flying above me through the water and that was so incredible. So even their manifestation worked <laughs> No, literally, like everything, it's not just like it's humans, it's it's everything. Like, let's just say a, a certain tree has a vibration and you want to see a, a lotus plant that you've not really seen before. That has a frequency and you will be guided somehow towards that tree. Like, you think, okay, well, I think of a friend, I'll see them, yeah. But if you think of a stingray or whatever you call it, a manta ray, mm-hmm. you think of a squirrel or a deer, you're going to attract it too. Like, often I'm on a walk and I can feel a squirrel looking at me over there or whatever, like a fox or a cat. And I just look and he's like become aware of me so Mm. I can pick up his awareness of me like quantum physics, you know, when you're being observed. Well, that squirrel's looking at me. I can feel it. Those stingrays are guiding themselves by uh, an instinct, a magnet, and it's going towards feeling and frequency. So if you picked up a thought of I want to see you and you're a harmonious, high frequently charged energy, he's going to decide to swim north as opposed to south. And that's the difference between putting out a thought and attracting it. Mm. and not um yeah that it that, that that's amazing yeah, yeah. also yeah. with like flowers um how you it might sound weird to some people but how you treat flowers or plants in general has an impact on them let's say you you have some roses in your living room and then when you it might sound weird but when you talk to them and send them love vibration they last longer it's really true i tried it it, it was an experiment it's great that it works and that is um yeah that's the proof that everything is vibing in energy yeah like every like human body the cells will die and divide and create more a certain vibration that's why if you're depressed then you get disease because the cells aren't they're just not vibrating enough to like divide and you know fuck off and tread again so when you're on a high vibration it's churning up new stuff i have a massive flower bed in the garden planted the seeds are called california poppies they're just like bright orange flowers 
they have been blossoming for the last like say seven eight months every day i snip off the dead ones i watered them i look at them i watch the bees and all the popping from one to the other it's like there's a wasp pop 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 bee hop pop pop and then there's a so many types of bees and flies and like it's just amazing and i'm like can't wait to get up and see them open up because in the morning they they close up because it's cold and then they open up and it's amazing and they have lasted and my dad was like they haven't even died yet they just keep budding so yeah. when you care for something like a child you are literally giving it life and when you give up when you like i always say people should have a plant before they get a dog before they get a kid because if you can't look after a plant there's no you're not gonna look after a dog and certainly not a kid and if you do like look after a plant and like make it as part of your routine to love and nurture you do feel like it is responding to you because it's sort of flowering it's getting green and it really is amazing um everything in life responds to that harmonious love and you know you think about dr doolittle and snow white where she comes out and all the birds come up to her and all the animals yeah that, that's the only true thing about a fairy tale that does <laughs> exist yeah all the other stuff about prince charm is nonsense but you like on a high frequency animals are like driven to their own vibration so there's like negative charges over there and there's a positively charged person they don't know it's coming from a human they just feel the energy mm. before you know it you've got a butterfly in your hand a man a manta ray whatever you said literally swimming next to you dolphins popping up you know, they feel that charge and it's phenomenal when you take everything away that this world is here. Like, the, that's the only real thing. None of this is real, yeah. but that energy world is real. Yeah, that's so true. And when you give energy to to something or someone or like an animal, you get that back, vice versa. You get that love energy back from that animal. And no matter what form or from plants, like you said before in your garden, it gives you so much love, right? To just look at it and have it. Yeah, people don't, People need to spend more time in nature because, as you said, it balances up your, let's call it chi, right? Yeah. We're all supposed to be vibrating at the frequency of nature, Earth's nature, 528, whatever it is, right? And people spend so much time indoors, around technology, around negative people in the office. And they, all they have got to do is go out for a walk in nature and it really just changes everything. Like it really resets your body. And I always make it, I always try to make it a part of my routine to go on a walk at least like once, twice a day. Mm. And then I feel when I don't go out, I feel the difference. And then I go out, like I went out this morning, like morning, it's blue sky, it's quite cold, but it's like nice cold, it's fresh. And then in the morning, the sun's always a lot more powerful than it is during the day. And it really sets you up for the day in a happy mindset. Otherwise, you're sort of laying in bed, you know, what to do. And, and you're not in an energy to do new stuff like inspiration comes from knowing how you'll feel when you do it rather than oh, i don't feel like i can't be asked to get out of bed to go on a walk but then when you go on a walk you're like oh my god i'm so glad i did that mm. i feel like so many people have difficulties to um, start meditation or start a healthy routine in their daily lives so um, they find it hard to make a change um, because they always think in their mind it has to be something big like today I meditate for two hours and then I get all these downloads and I feel connected with my soul but that's not how it works you just simply have to go step by step like you said go out in nature and uh, or go for a hike spend one hour with yourself in silence and just listen to your soul what your soul has to tell you right because um, downloads or inspiration comes when everything is quiet around you in silence that's how you get inspirational thoughts or ideas yeah people always have to be um talking to somebody always have to do something texting somebody speaking to somebody like people are scared to be alone and that's because when they are alone they are finally in tune to their feelings and people don't like to feel things whether it's good or bad people don't like to feel things it's like a, a foreign feeling because they're so used to feeling this that when they feel that it's like oh my god this is weird but that's just because they're not used to feeling it so that's that's like that is what they need to do. Stop spending time with foreign energies and vibrations so they actually have time for themselves. And I, I know from like growing up, I was always scared to feel things until I realized that that is the issue. You just have to learn to feel things and that that becomes your default vibration where that becomes home and everyone else's nonsense becomes foreign. So you flip it. But everyone instead these days doesn't want to focus on themselves that they focus so much on everyone else and now everyone's got anxiety depression and then they take tablets to trick themselves and to, to believe in that they feel normal and they're on it for so long that they forget why they were on it and yeah that's why i think tablets are so dangerous like if it's the last resort yes 
but they're so dangerous, like steroids, like you're tricking your body to believe in that you can walk fine, and yet you're fucking up your, your joint even more because you can't feel the pain. Yeah. Yeah, I think people are really afraid to feel things or open their heart um, because they could get hurt by someone. But um, what is important to, to know is that only when you open your heart, you can feel like that true love also for yourself, self-love. That's a big issue for so many people. Um, but they, they're not ready for that. Or not, they don't want to open up. Um, tell me um, a, your most like powerful law of attraction story. Um, actually, I was in a place where I didn't feel happy at all. And uh, I didn't know how to change. That was like three years ago. And I had this uh, picture um, on my Instagram feed of Bali. And I thought, wow, this would be great to just be there for a little while to recharge my energies. And I was working from Munich that time. And I didn't know how to do it. But I just went for it. So I booked a flight and uh, with that, everything changed in my life. So um, on that flight, I even got an upgrade because I was just thinking about that. And then I arrived in Bali and everything I thought about, like I have to find a flat. I found a flat the next day um, and everything worked out so perfectly and aligned that I really experienced how powerful the law of attraction is. And that was the first time that I even got in touch with that uh, law of attraction or the universal laws. And from that on, I just kept learning, learning, learning. And um, now I'm doing that. I'm coaching people because for me, it was a mission or it is a mission to to spread that out into the world. So people understand they are the creator of their own lives because it was such a big learning lesson for me. Yes, yeah, so like uh, law of attraction, you have things to do and then you create it but there's also the law of attraction in terms of the unknown which is what you said which is what is amazing about life the unknown where you book a ticket to bali and you know you're going to find a place you know you're gonna it's just there's going to be near a train station and you're going to have a job nearby in a perfect pub who's got a position opening up it all falls into place and if you try to like write a plan of okay i need to have a place near a pub near a train station you go through all these hello do you have you got this nope sorry then you fucking spend your whole life trying to book and make sure it's all like lined up that you wouldn't even get anywhere but just jumping and knowing it will line up that's amazing and animals when they migrate they just trust their gut and they know where they're going and they end up there. So why are humans any different? And we're not. And um, when I moved to London for the first time, I decided a week before I was going to move out a week later. I packed my shit, told my mum she got out of the shower while I'm going to London. And then I just literally got a place just so I was in London. And then I found a place closer and closer. And then I switched like three times until I got into the central, got a job, you know, literally just... It just all fell into place. I just jumped and worked it out along the way. And as long as you know you shouldn't, as long as you've not got anything to lose, like you've got a child at home you need to go back to or you have a a sick mother or whatever, you literally can just jump and it will always be okay. But if you know you've got something to deal with, then it won't because you're not in that flow. But it, literally, it's the most amazing thing. You just jump into the pool and work out how to swim. Like that is exciting about life, just knowing it's going to happen. And then the perfect someone comes up to you in the streets and says, I'm looking for uh, somebody to work in a bar. And you're like, well, I'm looking for a bar job. And it's like law of attraction again. You know what I mean? It's amazing. Yeah, it is. It truly really is. You just have to trust life, right? And then take action on that every day. And I think also what's important is um, to get out of your comfort zone. When you have a dream or you want to accomplish something and uh, you draw it into your life through your thoughts, and action but then you really have to go and get it like you said you just just move even if the place isn't perfect in the first place but you just have to do it and then life guides you directly to where you want to be it's like so it's why networking so powerful because you might not need that person when you give them a business card right ever but they might know somebody who then recommends you so that connection was not relevant, but through going out, you created another connection. So just by moving slightly, it, it opens up doors. That's yeah. why when people want stuff to happen, you have to move because if you haven't got anything and you don't go and get anything, then you still got nothing. <laughs> so you have yeah. to go out to get something. It's like you go to the shop to get some milk and then there's so much other food there. But you, if you didn't think to get the milk, then you wouldn't know about all this Coke and all the bread and all the other stuff in that shop. And yeah, people want to know it's there first. And it's like, no, it's not how it works. You just got like trust that it's there. Might not be in the shop that you think it is in, but it's going to be there somehow.
Yeah, yeah. A few days ago, I went to a bookstore because I was looking for one particular book to buy um, for my friend's birthday. And I thought, this is exactly how life is, right? You don't just go to, to a place and uh, see what's there, but you have something in your mind that you want to get. And then you will find it. It will be there. So this is the law of attraction. But when you're once you're there and you found your book, then so many new opportunities open up. And maybe when you're there already, you might change your change your thoughts or change your uh, wishes that you have, and then you can pick from there. So, like you said, just move step by step forward. Um, I need to get my charge for my laptop. One sec. Okay. <laughs> it's about to die. Again. Right, sorry, continue. No worries. <laughs> no. Right, what were we saying? Uh, I just... Uh, oh, yeah, your book. You went to the bookstore to buy your friend a birthday present or whatever, book, whatever. Yeah, so that's that's life. Uh, how life works. You have something in mind, you go and get it, and you trust that it will be there. See, do not go like our grandparents' years. They didn't have TVs, phones, laptops, nothing. So their days consisted of just going out and doing something and then when they were out they get an idea to do something next time so they go to say the zoo and then there's somebody saying selling opera tickets and so you get an opera ticket and then you go to the opera next week and then when you go to the opera you meet somebody there who's got a, a, a cake sale and then you go to the cake sale during the week and before you know it, they're 60 years old that's what our life has always been like right technology is good but i do think that it is the, the major problem like the solution is the problem there was something on netflix um zach efron did a you might have seen it zach efron did a did you see it zach efron traveled different places and yeah the, it's called down to earth yeah yeah and he said the solution is the problem so we're trying to do all this stuff to like you know save the animals and shit like that and plastic in the ocean it's like the plastic bag is the problem like just stop you know um we try and fix everything and end up causing more problems which is why i'm against medicine because you take a tablet and it fixes one thing and you create another problem and they had five other tablets for those problems and now it's like 25 problems because it duplicates every single time um yeah yeah exactly me too i'm not taking any medicine because i feel like we have the power to heal, heal ourselves with our own energy we just have to relearn how it works and trust that we're able to do that like something like you know coronavirus it's a it's a, a foreign bacteria that we probably would die without a flu jab but the common flu for example we have our own our own immune system it has the ability to fight something that's common and around so i don't believe we should take jabs every year for say the common flu if you allow your body to get used to it once for example the next year when the strains increase just a little bit your body's going to be used to it but something like the corona, like a random virus say hrv or whatever which is so foreign to our bodies then i agree that because man's become so smart we can create like a vaccine to stop that but just taking tablets for everything is just so wrong like vitamin c vitamin d at winter because you all live indoors now and we don't migrate to where the sun is we should take vitamin d right um but taking it all the time and vitamin d vitamin c zinc magnesium it's like all this stuff if our body needed that that bad it would it would create it and then you get your body used to having all these like compounds in you that's tricking yourself into believing that i've got this and then the minute you stop it's like well i'm, I'm fucked you know what i mean yeah exactly yeah i'm not a big fan of that either um i feel like your body is talking to it constantly and whenever you feel like there's lack of something you will know sooner or later and then you have the power to to change that you don't have to take all the supplements for that what's your thoughts on um people drawing on eyebrows right because 
um i look i'm all about empowerment right and i'm like you're a human being like there's no such thing as a perfect eyebrow i'm like i heard there's a tattoo thing where people shave off their eyebrows and they tattoo eyebrows on and i was like you having a laugh so girls or whatever will shave off the eyebrow and tattoo an eyebrow one i'm like that is for life that's not just like a lip filler that's there for life what's your thoughts on that yeah i'm all about natural so i don't like tattoos or anything actually um because like you said you you get what your body needs and it's naturally created in a perfect way so you don't have to take it off and repaint it or do permanent makeup i'm not a big fan of that but i also have to say um people can make their own life choices it's up to them and uh, i don't want to (laughs) yeah tell people what to do (laughs) So like humans are the, one of the only animals that don't create vitamin C, right? And I think it's because we had so much fruit as apes in the jungle, whatever that our body got so much vitamin C that it stopped. But there's a, there's a, a long gap between, say, leaving the jungle to now, like thousands of years that we haven't have had vitamin C in us. So why do we need a company to give us vitamin C when we, we've, we've survived that long without it? You know? Yeah. We're giving something that you could say we had once or we should need but in terms of evolution if it was that bad we we would either die because we haven't got it or we're fine without it so we don't need all this extra vitamin c for example because we're fine without it as you said we have what we need to live in life and it's only when humans get involved try and sell us some nonsense that there's problems <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's all about selling and uh we have all these devices that we use almost every minute in a day and um, we believe that we have to get all that stuff. So the more time we spend on social media or on the internet, we believe that uh, we are not perfect as we are. And we need all those materialistic things to make us happy, right? Do you um do you think you know um Elon Musk has created this like brain chip thing? Yeah. Do you think that is that is it's going to cause so many problems or it's actually a good thing because obviously we have telepathy already in us and that's basically along the lines of telepathy yeah like you put a chip in your ring you can communicate do you think that this is really necessary or this is like the end of the evolutionary cycle of like man doing something that nature already has to offer like telepathy little chip in your head doing the same thing yeah i think it's a very controversial topic um I think I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't do it because like you said, we already have it in us. We just have to rediscover or relearn how to use it because we, we got so disconnected from our body and our power. Um, but on the other hand, technology and also spirituality go hand in hand. So if we don't develop um, and go further in evolution, we would just stop where we are now. We wouldn't develop anymore. It's, it's very controversial. What's your thoughts on water? So tap water as opposed to like bottled water. Because the tap water is sewage water filtered and load of shit put in it to make it clean. Whereas bottled water is apparently comes from the mountains, which has all the magnesiums and all the other compounds in that we should be having. Um, what's your thoughts on quality of water? Because that is a massive part of us. And again, we just drink out the tap. And I find that when I used to drink a lot of tap water, that I wasn't actually, I was still thirsty. And I tried to understand why. It's like I was having two litres a day, but I was still thirsty. And then when you understand that we drink not before the amount of fluid, but what's in it. Like, and I tried to understand how does a fish live if he's not breathing like the air? And I try, and then I realised it's the oxygen in the water. It's your cells getting the oxygen. When your cells don't have the oxygen, you feel the need to breathe we get it through air the fish gets it through the water i start to understand that but it's the oxygen in the water or the compounds in the water not the amount of the water so yeah what's your thoughts on um yeah i think uh we have to get all those minerals from the water let's say we drink mount- fresh mountain water we get those minerals right it ha- doesn't have to be really purified it's actually bad for us to drink pur- purified water yeah. um but when i used to live in big cities i never drank tap water because i had the same experience um it, it wouldn't really i didn't feel good when i drank the water so i would always buy bottled water but now i live 
in the mountains, like in the Alps, and we have um, a fountain, and I drink the water from the tap because it's it's clean but with minerals, so it's the best water that I can get. So I stopped buying um, bottled water. But yeah. yeah you have to make sure that your water has enough minerals for your body to to function well. It's crazy how many people in this life have disease, and when we look at the way we're living and how nature is living, it's it's not it's completely the opposite. It's things like water we people do take it for granted and people get so much disease because of simple stuff like lack of sleep lack of pure water like people are drinking red bulls and cokes and coffees all the time you can drink that but your body like a plant needs water you can't just feed your plant milk it's not going to grow it will grow with water and um i think that every i think i think that man is going to be extinct not when I say man, I mean like societies and civilizations as we know it will be completely like dissolved in the next say 150 years. It'll be like small tribes again, small villages, little Germany, little England, little a state in America. Trying to trying to like all the humans, trying to share every human you know, bit of knowledge and help every human and feed every human. It's just not it's not possible. Like a big bang, it will blow. Mm-hmm. And all those boom, just start like it's just everywhere, and it just starts again. Um, yeah, there's just no way that no way it can continue. I don't think I'll be here, I don't think you'll be here, but you know, it, it's it's inevitable. And you know, people will say, like, technology years ago, people find like old technology that's like, how do they have that then? Or like, certain like Stonehenge, how did it get on top? And we're thinking, well, we we created tractors say 100 years ago. They didn't have tractors back then. And I'm like, well, if this cycle keeps repeating itself, we're just part of that cycle. Like people who say aliens in Mars, right? That's just, that's equivalent to Elon Musk right now. Yeah. Wanting to leave the earth to go on another planet. But thousands of years ago, human beings did the same thing. And then they went to Mars and they look back at humans like dumb humans, you know, and they fly a spaceship around like trying to influence them to do this well it's just the same cycle happening again if there is aliens up there they're just like an evolved human like us but you know i'm trying to say like years and years and years ago so it's the same cycle we get too smart we don't like our planet it's too populated we go live in mars and then we look back on the next human generation you know (laughs) yeah it's a very interesting thought yeah but i think especially now you can see really a shift in people's minds because people have to to think differently and for example, what you said about um, the water, um, people get back to to nature and to their own soul connection. So they realize how important it is to drink clean water, to to eat fresh food, to exercise, to keep your mindset healthy, to to meditate. So many people have like an awakening at the moment because they they notice that they can't go any further from where they are now. It, it's just too much. It's overwhelming. Um, so I think there will be a division of people who think it could continue like that and people who really reconnect with their own soul. So I think this has only really happened in the last, not even like a hundred years. When you think about how we're all yearning and lost for this one thing, you go back to our grandparents era and their grandparents and their grandparents, it was just kind of all the same. Like there was really just you know, you had a house, you had a fire, you you had your meals, and then that was it. It's only recently that this massive awakening has happened at the same time where we're all trapped anyway. You know what I'm trying to say? Like yeah. years and years ago, even like a hundred years ago, we nobody was trapped in our minds like we were because we didn't have any of this clutter everywhere. And so, yeah, everything goes back to nature. But I honestly think it's only in the last 100 years that all this has happened. You know, would you, do you agree? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, and I think it's also, it's a big chance for us to be trapped in that way because now we have really the time to, to spend time with ourselves and to think about what we want to be, what we want to create. And uh, for so many people, it's just too scary. So um, they, they find it hard, especially now, to, to spend time with themselves. What do you think of um, people growing their own crops and vegetables in their in their garden? So I've got a vegetable patch and I've got coriander, parsley, basil, chilies, potatoes, herbs. And all I did was get like, 
you know, a potato had a root on it. Normally, my mum would put it in the bin, and I chopped off the root, put it in the in the in the soil. And no joke, there's like thirty potatoes, and we had roast dinner with them, right? And um, chilies. I got seeds from a chili that was just from another chili. Tomato seeds from another tomato seed. Normally, I'd buy like a, a seed bag of tomato seeds, right? But instead, I just got a tomato, got it out, planted it, got a whole flipping tomato plant. What do you think that of, of that? I love of- that because you really know where it comes from. You grow your own vegetables and you have that connection to nature. And you, you put it in the soil and then you get it back, right? You can put that food in your body. It's like a cycle, a healthy cycle. I love that. And it's like people bin so much food because they, they go to the shops, they buy it and they say you can only buy like say four chilies, but you only need one. So you use one chili, it sits in the fridge, it goes moldy, and then you bin the three. Whereas if you've every night watered that chili plant and planted it and watched it grow like a baby, yeah, you're not just going to want to bin it. You're going to want to give it to your neighbor because you feel like you're just, you can't just give a what, you can't just bin something that you've made, like you've painted something. You don't want it, but you can't just bin it, at least give it away. If you've like watered your plant every night, seen the potatoes grow from a sprout and it branches out, that's an exciting process. And you've got more care over waste. Like you only pick one chili rather than five because you can go in the garden and get a bit more if you need it. You go to the shops these days because of profit. You've got by four chilies when you only need one and everything's wasted. You don't see where it comes from. And that's it's a beautiful process of growing your own stuff because you really feel like you want you you've created something and you're eating it and you appreciate it and you enjoy it. Otherwise, you're like, I'm finished. I can't be asked. You eat crap. You eat crisp and chocolate before meals, for example. And then if you don't eat your potatoes and your veg, which some man somewhere along the line, he's got a family, had to spend all day in the sun picking for you. You don't see all that shit. You think, yeah. oh, I just bin it because I've I've had a, uh, I've just had crisps. Yeah. And yeah, we're losing touch with of what life should be and always has been. And it's so simple, like just putting a basil plant on your window sh- sill, you know, rather than getting a bag from the shop and then binning half of it because you need a leaf. So you get a plant, you just pick one little leaf and then it keeps growing. My coriander plant has gone from this. It's fucking huge. It, I can't even believe how big it is. And that wow. could feed the whole neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, you, you really increase your awareness for, um, for the cycle of nature, also with animals. Like people go to the supermarket and buy meat, right? And they don't care if they bin it and throw it away if it's too much. But they, they don't really see what's behind all that. And the animal, if people really had to, <laughs> to go get the meat for themselves, they, they probably wouldn't do it. But because it's so easy to just go to the supermarket and get something that you need, people don't have that awareness. Yeah, this is like, I don't eat much meat, but my diet is pretty much of like vegetarian, vegan style. So not not for the belief, but like of what those foods are, like natural quality foods. And I was speaking the other day with somebody, would I be vegan if I saw the process of how you get milk, how you treat the cow? And it's like... I don't have an answer because what you don't know can't harm you. And once you see something, you can't undo it. So it's tricky. Everything in life, like we've only evolved, I believe, because we've had, say, a lot of meat, a lot of protein. So we were stronger and we evolved. So you can't just stop eating meat, for example, because in terms of a a species, we've only got to this point from all this, you know, rich meat and iron. So with every like solution, there's a problem and every problem, there's a solution. It's like we need fruit and veg weren't doing it. And then man found caves and cooked food and then we evolved. Right. But then if you start not eating all of that, then we're going to all have like not enough strength to to live a lifestyle that we have to do. Go to the gym, go and walks, cook and clean for like six children and then take them to school. And, you know, so it's tricky because there's no right or wrong way it's unique to that person and that's what it comes down to like the small tribes where there's going to be so many belief systems out there that there's just going to be like a vegan tribe you know just so many different small tribes yeah and it all focus on one belief system and everyone's happy and everyone's trying to change each other's mind then you've got you know yeah <laughs> I think it's really um, important to educate yourself about what you put in your body or what you consume so um, I'm fully vegan and I, I'm very, very happy. My body's great. I exercise every day. And I believe when you educate yourself and you know um, what's going on behind the scenes, for example, um, that's a, a mindset shift for yourself. You will never, ever consume these products again once you saw that. And um, 
And B, there are so many other ways to nourish your body. You don't have to eat meat for that. That's my opinion. Yeah, so I, I live, I'm on a keto diet, not religiously, but I have a one so one meal every day at lunchtime. I fast till 12 and I have a meal that's full of fats and olives and seeds and nuts. And I used to think, you know, like a lot of gym people think that you need to have like steak to get your protein. And it's like there's just as much protein in a nut, in a Brazil nut, in a macadamia nut that you don't need to do that. And again, it's just knowledge and education. If people knew that, they could literally have a handful of nuts and they get the same protein as a, as a steak. They wouldn't do it because even though you could say it's tasty, you do feel shit having to process all that animal muscle. Like your body has to put energy into that digestive system. That's tiring. And I know when I used to eat a lot of meat growing up, not so much anymore, that you just feel tired, always digesting. Like I call it, if you had to have a fight with a cow, who would win? The cow would win. It's bigger. So you digesting a cow, you know, the, the, the strength of the, of the, say, the protein in a cow versus yourself, it's tiring, you know, it's not supposed to, to be in us. You could say like snakes and small birds and stuff like that. Yeah, you could process better, but big animals like cows and like sheep and lamb and stuff like that, it's not natural. Hence why a lot of, say, people get like prostate cancer because they eat a lot of meat and you wouldn't put a piece of, if you put a piece of meat on, on a banana and left it on the side, all it, all the juice from the meat and all the bacteria would erode that that banana. It would erode the counter. If you put it on a piece of wood, it would erode it. So people just eat so much meat all the time. It's going through their digestive system and their colon or whatever. No wonder people get disease and cancer and say they're ass because you're rotting, you're rotting dead flesh. It's not supposed to be in you, you know, a nice olive or a nice nut you just picked. It's healthy. It's life. It's got like a lifespan of say two weeks. But when you have the animal, it died like three weeks ago. And then you're eating it in yourself and it's still in yourself. Think about it. When you have meat, you might not know, but years ago you might. When you have meat, you get stuck in your teeth. If you don't floss within a day, that stinks. Yeah. And I think, wow, imagine that on a bigger level inside you. Mm. Jesus, that's going to be. And that's how people get disease. Not just yeah. that, but that's one of the reasons just w what you eat. You're just destroying yourself. Yeah, I think uh, animal meat doesn't belong in our bodies. And like you said, you have to eat something that gives you life right life force prana chi energy so you have to eat fruits nuts vegetables but not dead energy which is from meat like the cow that just died three weeks ago yeah so like that death in your body you can't expect to get life force energy out of that yeah like that 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 cow's energy aura say went into heaven a long time ago there's no energy in there it's just it's, it's nothing right so that's why a lot of people don't have much energy because they're eating the wrong foods but if you have like a fresh banana off a tree or an apple or a strawberry even just like some coriander there's energy there it's life if you put it under a microscope you'd see like the vibrational difference between say a bit of steak and a nut and then you realize wow it's not just like the biology that gives us energy like the nutrients but it's the belief system like you know mind over matter that because i've eaten a nice a live apple i'm gonna have more energy like placebo effect it's, it's, it's so many so many factors to it yeah that's true yeah. not to mention like the water and the nutrients from like fruit and veg yeah did you know that you can even um activate your water if you like putting a piece of paper a positive picture a note on a piece of paper of like a a happy being Put, put the water on there and you yeah. can put like a uh, a devil or something or satan right and put the water on there and that water tastes different on this that what you're going to say yeah exactly so you can really prime your water there was an experiment by dr emoto um and he said that when you charge your water with negative words or you play heavy metal music and you you say to the water you're ugly um i hate you uh he froze this water and the crystals were really disrupted and really ugly. But then when he told the water, you're beautiful, I love you, just uh, charge the water with positivity and um, love energy, the water crystals were extremely beautiful and it was amazing. Do you know about this? Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you can really charge anything that you put in your body, might maybe food or water or whatever, even your, your body itself. That's a lot of that. That's that's one of the main reasons why religious people they bless their food or they pray before food because it's not just like thanking God. It's about 
putting out positive love and vibration into that food to charge it so when it's in you it's more in harmony with you so you you keep that digestion for longer so let's just say you you're an animal and you're not going to find food for three days right so you live off the fats in you well if that's in harmony with you you're going to keep it right if you have a load of shit food in you your body's going to want to get rid of it and you've not got any energy because you've got rid of the shitty food so if you like bless your food and charge it it's going to want to stay in you because it's more in harmony like the butterfly is going to come to you or me because of high vibrations whereas if you like mom i hate these fucking carrots i hate vegetables why can't we have like nuggets that food's going to absorb all that negative vibration and then you're going to be sick later and it's so true like i used to be sick after just eating bad food because you could say that when people say have negative connotations against say fast food like mcdonald's mm. that that ch- chicken nuggets picking up the vibration of everyone slagging off mcdonald's it's true it is picking up the vibration of everyone slagging off mcdonald's everything is vibration and it's so powerful when you think about water crystals and how it's changed by thoughts and then every pretty much everything we eat is water you can, can change like the, the the structure of anything you eat and people everything it's just phenomenal to yeah. the point where you can't be thinking about it all the time because it's just too overwhelming like how powerful the mind is and how you literally can think of say you've got a friend called Rebecca and you want her to ask you to go out for a dinner right and then you don't message her but then you know she's going to message you in a week say hey do you want to go out for dinner and you feel like you're manipulating like you're some kind of magician like you know what I mean and because they've asked you to go out they pay for you you know and it's like well I knew if I put it out she would so it's like how do you balance this a gift of whatever you want to call it gift of God right yeah (laughs) when others don't have the gift of God, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, it, it all comes down to awareness. When you're aware of your own power, you can actually educate yourself and learn how to use that power. You just have to be constantly mindful of your your thoughts and your actions. That might be overwhelming, but it's it's a great gift, right? What um, are you processing learning on YouTube at the moment? Some you're, some you're studying or like online youtube watching nurturing whatever uh at the moment i'm reading the book conversations with god from uh, neil donald walsh i'm not sure if you know that but yes yeah, so somebody recommended me that book um so the first person i did a podcast with when i first started podcasting we we helped we spoke about that book and i read a chapter in that book he was like you need to read it because it will it will he knows i know a lot of it anyway but it, he said it will do something to me or whatever so maybe that's a sign to read that book exactly. because I haven't actually read it anyway what were you going to say about the book yeah so I'm listening to the audiobook right now and it's like 26 hours long because it's uh, five big chapters and it's truly amazing because I experienced um, that to a certain extent myself in my meditations and listening to this conversation with God is really eye-opening and mind-opening and um there's so many invaluable teachings in that book that uh, you can just listen to, let's say, five minutes um, every day. And only that little conversation gives you much more energy and uh, gives you happiness. And it's amazing. I can recommend it to anybody who's slightly interested in spirituality or the connection to the universe, higher source or whatever you want to call it or believe in. Is that audiobook on YouTube or have you got to get it off like Amazon or something or Audible? Uh, Audible. How much is it? Um, I don't know because I collected the coins, so I just got it. Um, I can't tell. I don't know. Okay. Right. This is the perfect time to, uh, to end this. Do you want to like plug anything like what websites, Instagram, whatever you're doing? Yes. Yeah, so my website is uh, monateresa.com, but it's in German. But my Instagram page is fully in English, so um, people can understand it. And I also published my own book um, a few months ago, beginning of the year. It's called um, Five Steps to the Desert of Your Mind. It's a meditation guide for people to to learn step by step how to reconnect with themselves and um, become more silent. So finding a quiet place in your mind to really connect with yourself again. Um, this is what I teach in that book, and it's. It's thin, uh, not complicated to read, but um, yeah, the reviews I got, they said it's very well valuable. <laughs> so 
<laughs> right, I'm just going to end the podcast right there, and I'll speak to you after. Okay. If you've enjoyed this episode, I have many more for you to listen to, so go back and have a look at the old ones. Also, make sure that you have subscribed and notifications are turned on so you know when I've released a new one. Follow me on Instagram. Yes, King Oliver. Have a great day.